Well, my friends, before we go into what is going to be one of the most interesting stories that is developing before our eyes regarding P. Diddy, which of course, of course, will be just dismissed by many in the mainstream media because that's, you know, rappers or something. They, you know, don't matter, sort of, kind of. You know, uh huh. Well, anyway, what is interesting to note now, first of all, is of course the bridge. And what is important is for me to turn to you, wonderful people, and to ask the question: What do you think about that? What do you think? The Dali container vessel. After striking the Francis Scott Key Bridge, how many Americans do you think do not know who Francis Scott Key was? Okay, couple of things to notice. Please Google. Please pay attention to. Please watch the mayor of the mayor of Baltimore, Brandon Scott, thirty-nine years old. Just look at him. Listen to him. He's the mayor of Baltimore. That's number one. Number two, listen to the way they say Baltimore. There's certain regional accents you can hear. One of them, believe it or not, is Philadelphia because they say this Philadelphia and a boat and coke and you can hear it. I can spot that. I, I, I have you heard or seen that? Meme that is going on of this creepy. Uh, you're the employee of the. Anyway, that that's kind of a weird, almost like a Philly esque. There's a sound to it. And number three, do me a favor, go to Wikipedia. I never tell people that. Look at the signature, the signature of the mayor, and tell me what you think. Okay, that's all I want to say. Baltimore has been through hell recently. In my absolute blockbuster performance in the series, the House of Cards, we shot it in Baltimore. As you know, people to this day are still talking about it. the industry was a buzz by virtue of my performance as a talk radio host with Robin Wright in one particular series. I don't know what year it was, but it was it was it was great. Okay, so that's it. So we're going to be talking about that. And we're going to be letting you. By the way, I want all of your imaginations to run wild today. I know yesterday we were talking about oh the Illuminati. I said please don't tonight today. Bring out the Illuminati. Go ahead. It's okay. I'm dying to hear what you think about this. This is reminiscent of us in uh, Tampa, actually. In believe it or not, was this one place? It was. It was. It was in Tampa Bay. It was this, the actual bay in uh, May of 1980. I'll never forget that day. There was this some adventure. The Sunshine Skyway Bridge hit, and I think it was like 13 people were killed. A bus fell. I mean, it it was unbelievable. The some adventure. Let me see. Yep, it was on uh, May 19th, 1980. 7:30 in the morning. Terrible, terrible um, uh, storm. Uh, there was a 1,200 foot span, and it killed approximately 35 people. Were killed after six cars, a truck, and a Greyhound bus fell over 150 feet. And that was just a ship that hit. We will talk about that, dear friends. We will talk about a lot. There is so. Listen to what I'm saying. You have no idea all that is happening right now. It is mind blowing, and I promise you, I promise you, conventional mainstream heritage media will not be covering it this way. They don't know what to look for, and they've also been told to shut up. So do me a great favor. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you are subscribed. Hit that like button. Like buttons are critical. They're the lifeblood. And make sure you also do me a great, great favor 
and hit that little bell so you're notified of live streams and new videos. But listen, first of all, to our first sponsor. Let's talk about a very serious subject, emergency food. That's right, emergency food. Now, I know at first blush, it's difficult for most people to think about something that they just, just take for granted, ever reaching, you know, emergency status. We're used to stores always being open, deliveries always made, no supply chain disasters, no, no ransomware catastrophes, you know, shutting down gas stations, no trucking strikes, no war, no protests from farmers, no mysterious Chinese weather balloons, nothing, nothing catastrophic in terms of weather. Well, that can't happen to us, right? And I understand it's a defense mechanism that we have because the idea of ever not being able to eat or locate food is seemingly incomprehensible to most people. But think about this. It's not. That's why it's time for you to go to my site, preparewithlionel.com. Preparewithlionel.com has the deal of deals for you. Take it as a, as a starter set, an introduction set. You've been putting off emergency food for too long. Some people still have a thing about prepping as though prepping for emergency is foolish. Now, right now, you can save $200 on the three-month emergency supply kit. This is unbelievable. 22 varieties with a 25-year shelf life, 25 years, 2,000 calories a day in six rugged buckets, 120 pounds of food. Could you go three months, 90 days if stores close? Be honest. Could you go a week without any trips to the store? I don't think so. I'm not talking about having stuff in your cabinet. I'm not talking about banana chips and jerky. I'm talking about food, real food. So go right now to preparewithlionel.com. This moment right now, preparewithlionel.com, preparewithlionel.com. Go now and thank me later. Now, let me explain to many of you newbies and welcome aboard here. I don't even know where to start. Let me first ask you the question. Apparently, do we know the source of this film? It looks like a security camera or something. I don't know what it is. I think there's some voices in the background. It's stationary. So that makes me think. But everybody is showing the same identical pictures. Where is this? Joe Lacey got it right. Francis Scott Key, National Anthem, Star Spangled Banner. Thank you. One of the worst songs ever, ever. Sean Did He Combs, Flat Earth Man, very funny. I hope you saw last night's video right after I broke where I wrote, did he or didn't he? Thank you. We'll get to this in a moment. Speaking of which, we're going to have a lot of things. But, but right off the bat, is there anything about this bridge story that you think is, I'm not seeing it, maybe I don't know it, but something Illuminati related or suspicious. Could you say maybe this might have something to do with a paucity, a dearth, a dearth of uh, of uh, infrastructure monies? That could very well be. What what precisely do you think? How does what do you? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Ship lost power, question mark. Now, people are going to be saying, quit lost power. First and foremost, remember, I want someone in our group to tell me how many ships are there navigating at any given time? How many? How many at any given time, question number one. We could have 50 thousand ship containers like this navigating all over the country. I don't know. Number two, we need expert witnesses. We need somebody who does this, who says, uh-uh, I've got that problem. Was there a, a signaling problem? Is the city of Baltimore, listen to me, they say Baltimore. Baltimore, just drop the T, Baltimore. This is a rough place, as you know. Don't forget, check out this mayor. Just look at the picture of the mayor. That's all I want to tell you. Just look at the picture and say, okay, all right. This is his time to shine, okay? 
This is his time to shine. You can tell he's no Rudy Giuliani. Doesn't have a jacket on. Doesn't have city of a, like like an Eric Adams with mayor. He looks like he. I mean, granted, the first picture might have been shown, but this was this was one thirty in the morning. There were tugs involved. Baltimore cut the power. Let me see this. This is interesting. See your your crowdsourcing is fascinating. Baltimore cut power. I'm just going to throw this into Google and see what this is. Um, I'm going to then put in bridge. Sometimes it helps. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, ship lost power. Baltimore. This is from Sky. By the way, Sky News in Australia is always terrific. You notice that? They are wonderful. Uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has collapsed after a cargo ship collided with it. Baltimore City Fire Department has called it a developing mass casualty event. And uh, the bridge reconstruction could cost $600 million. Uh, let me see. Ship lost propulsion and warmed to crash. The Dolly container ship lost propulsion as it left the port and the crew on board had warned Maryland officials of a possible crash, according to ABC News, which cites an unclassified U.S. intelligence report. The vessel notified Maryland Department of Transportation that they had lost control of the vessel and a collision of the bridge was possible, according to uh, U.S. Oh, ABC quoted the Cyber Security and Infrastructure Security Agency. The va the vessel struck the bridge, causing a complete uh, uh, collapse. Could it have been? Could it have been? Do you believe, dear friends? Could it have been hacked? Hacked? Isn't this interesting? This, according to this thing called breaking news. We will remain this fascinating. Now, as it develops, remember, we don't know anything. Put this in your probable cause stack. Put this in your probable cause stack. Put this in your, your list that says, ask this, ask this, ask this. Who is the person? Does he have any instances of this in the past? Is the captain or pilot... In any way, does he have a series of, of uh, drunk? I'm, I'm not saying this, but who knows? These are the these are the issues that we would want to know. Remember what was at the Exxon Valdez? Remember when the 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 uh, captain was underground, under underneath, or whatever the hell the phrase is? Remember that one? We'll see that. You have to eliminate human error, error, sabotage, hacking, etc., etc., etc. And remember. And this is important. This is the most important thing in the world. You have to recognize. You have to recognize that they're going to be absolutely driving people crazy. Crazy. Okay? This is important. This is the most important. They're going to be pointing fingers to everyone. You understand? You have to be. Look at this. Lionel, I just heard you on with Don Z. Who is Don Z? I thought, who is this guy? He's hilarious and your voice is so unique. Great work. Who is Don Z? <laughs> I don't remember being on. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's news to me. I don't know of whom you speak. By the way, give us a call. Operators are standing by. 800 Whatever it is. Okay. Um, now, here we go. Those shipping crew guys get hammered and get into knife fights over card games and stuff. It's crazy. Okay, Uncle Sam. Take it easy there, partner. Take it easy. Yodi, holy, shiver me timber. I knew it was going to be. You see that? You know how those people are. We're going to also be talking about the Edmund Fitzgerald pretty soon. We're going to be playing that. Remember, watch what happens. It's the most 
Interesting thing. Uh, is Maersk a Denmark company, the golden circumstances of trade and shipping, which emerged during the First World War? Very interesting. The Valzine had a designated driver. Give the cap a break. Okay. Well, as you know, whenever there's a problem, you always blame the captain. Also remember, this is the most important thing in the world to remember. This happens all the time. There are ships that do this all the time. I work for Maersk. Brian says that. By the way, Brian, don't want to put hope that's not your real name. You know what I mean? Don't 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 uh, don't be a diddy or a didney. Diddy they're going to they're going to burn him. Like you cannot believe. Oh, I smell a pylon. Oh my God. So anyway, anybody see the mayor? Just see the mayor. You remember when I said, let's go to Mayor Gus Worthington. Good evening, Dave. And he, you know, this, this kind of a grandfatherly types. Check out the mayor. And more importantly, his signature. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. You tell me what you think that means. Now, sounds like Baltimore Channel is blocked, question mark. And may I ask you a question, dear friends? And please, I hope you're ready. This is so interesting. How did they get this photo? Where did this, where did this come from? Is this a fixed, just a, a is this one of those, is it a, a, a one of those ring cameras or? One of those things that happens to be going 24 hours. Do we hear some voices in the background? Here we go. Mark says, the bridge going down looks fishy to me. Why would it look fishy? It's a bit, yeah, but it looks fishy. Okay. Did you hear what I just said? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens to this, this idea, okay? Look at this one. His signature looks like he just learned how to write cursive writing. You know, if I saw this signature, I'd say this is a five-year-old child or or whatever you, what you write is like a child. But then again, that's not fair because nobody writes today. But just understand something, okay? Dr. Murph, I sub to your wife's channel. Thank you so much, Dr. Murph. I appreciate that. That is immensely important for me. And we thank you for that. For those of you who would like to, make sure you sign up. Right now, subscribe to Mrs. L on YouTube at Lynn's Warriors. Especially now, what's going on with Diddy. Oh, my God. She also talks about the idea of how social media laws are changing regarding people like uh, DeSantis and others. How that affects TikTok, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A lot of stuff going on. Weather camera, question mark? Don't know. Somebody get to the bottom of this. Faye Dalton says, here's my favorite. Things like that happen sometimes. That's, I want you as a juror. Thank you so much. If I represent the, the shipping company, I want Faye as the four person. You know what happens. I mean, it, uh, and it probably does. GPS was hacked, question mark? No. Let me read this again to you, my friends. Listen to me carefully. Oh, good. It's a distraction. Ah! You always do this, my friends. You always love, it's the distraction. You see, this, Diddy was set up by Biden to distract him from either, you pick, uh, Hunter, Ukraine, or Israel, or something. You, you, you'll make, I love that. I love the distraction. Let me read this again, my friends. This is from Ship Lost Propulsion and Warned of Crash. The Dolly, this is from New Sky News, the Dolly container ship, quote, lost propulsion as it left the port. And the, that was pretty quick. We lost propulsion. So it's just, what is it? Just if it lost propulsion, does that mean steering? Propulsion just means the movement. It can't steer. Anyway, it lost propulsion as it left the port. And the crew on hand had warned Maryland officials of a possible crash, according to ABC News, which cites an unclassified U.S. intelligence report. The vessel notified Maryland Department of Transportation, MDOT, that they had lost control of the vessel and a propulsion, excuse me, and a collision with the bridge was possible. ABC quoted the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Team as saying, 
the vessel struck the bridge, causing a complete collapse. So there you have that. Isn't it interesting? We have to go to Australia. Now, remember also, when you try to figure this out, you must ferret through the news. You must ferret through who says what and why. And I'm going to block this because this, this to me is the most interesting. I find this fast. By the way, don't forget, follow me at Lionel Media. That's also critical for you to get the latest because I think this is interesting. Remember, don't think, please don't necessarily think, don't go and think that it's, um, how do I say this, that it's uh, uh, sabotage or something yet. Could be, but remember, remember the old expression, the old doctor's expression. This is very, very critical. The old doctor's expression. And they say the following. They say that when you hear hoofbeats, don't think zebra. You got it? So don't think, don't think wild and exciting. Uh, darn ads. Shady ads are the lifeblood of capitalism and commerce. We thank the ads. We thank the ability to make money. We thank the ability to, to lend ourselves to the, to this river, to this circulation of, of, of this. I know it interrupts you, but it is our lifeblood. Okay. Advertising, being sponsored. It's what we do. Sorry for the inconvenience, but that means somebody wants to watch what we're doing. That's a good side. So I know you might be interrupt. You you might find this problematic, but it's it's the lifeblood. It is the it is the gray matter of what we do. Nord Stream, Red October. It was the cook. Was it Red October? No, it was the um. Remember that uh, uh, Steven Seagal kind of weird one? Okay. Oh, Don Imus. Sorry, thank you. Don Imus has been dead for I don't know how long. You were listening to that. Interesting. Uh, okay. Let's see what happens. By the way, anybody yet know about this camera? Have we seen this? That's, I want to know where this, everybody got this camera photo. I'm sure it was security or something because it was fixed. Much like the flowers in Kate's video, they were fixed. They didn't move. Just saying, just saying. Now, Diddy. The beginning of the end of a bezoar. A bezoar is a hairball. A bezoar is a is a hairball. It also be used as kind of an anti uh, of a poisoning thing. It is a clog. It is one of those undigestible things that. That John Wayne had in his gut. Remember that this is John Wayne died with a 50 pound, blah, you know, whatever this thing was, this thing. There. Listen to what I'm saying. Would you like me to get conspiracy with you? If that's what you go, by the way, it's not a conspiracy. Again, it's not a conspiracy. A conspiracy is a confederation of two or more people bringing about something that is, by the way, conspiracies could also not necessarily be secret. It doesn't say secret. It just means a, an agreement between two or more people for something illegal, something something wrong. But it doesn't mean two people keeping something quiet. That's not a conspiracy. If I know what's going on and you know what's going on and we elect not to say anything, that's not a conspiracy. You can call it a conspiracy of silence. A conspiracy is let's go ahead. Hey, let's let's form this drug trafficking me uh, ring. Okay, Diddy. Thanks, Dave. That's a conspiracy. That's it. Period. End of discussion. That is a conspiracy. That's it. Oh, I'm not done. Oh, Harry, Prince Harry's in there too. So let me make sure we get this. Because my friends, you listen to me every day and you're going to learn something. You're going to learn how to think. You're going to learn how to be real surgical. You're going to learn that suspicion doesn't mean fact. Fact doesn't mean suspicion. It just means, and just because you don't understand something doesn't really mean anything. You got what I'm saying? Good. Good. So a conspiracy. The law hates the agreement. 
Remember something. You and I can conspire to do something and never do it. Greeting from Oz. Love your show. God bless our Australian buddies. We love them. We love them. Thank you. Welcome aboard. God bless you. You have the best 60 minutes. Your news is, I mean, it's just brutal. There is a brutal. There is an, I cannot hear. This, may, may I say something? And I don't mean, I, as you know, in English, in British, there's res, res, uh, received, there's posh, Queen's English, there's a hello, yes, good morning. And there's a hello, call, you know, that terrible Dick Van Dyke, you know. There's my favorite, Newcastle, Geordies. Uh, uh, Geordies are the greatest. Mark Knopfler, even uh, Sting. These are the best. Geordie, that's where I want to go. Not London, Newcastle. Right? Anyway. Is there, are there, I've never heard a posh Australian. I, 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 I don't know. It seems like it's all this wonderfully beautiful, lyrical kind of a, I don't know if it's real. Maybe you can hear Melbourne versus Sydney versus, I don't know. I don't know enough about it. All I know is it's music to my ears. You know why? Australia means this. No bullshit. Love that. Look at your 60 Minutes. Look at your Sky News. They can, they they will break into mockery in the middle of a news program. I love that. All right. So remember, conspiracy. That's Understand, hold people to that. Remember this, Lionel's rule number 138. When somebody says conspiracy theory, stop them and say, what do you mean by that? Hold them down, get them into a corner, and they'll realize, I've been using a word I know nothing about precisely. Now, a couple of things to note. Why is this important? In the world, if I, I made, a, I made a, a, a joke one time, and I meant to make a joke, but if you... The next time there is the Academy Awards, if I took the Academy Awards, I mean everything, and not just in that room, but I mean, the, the, imagine the people who were there, not the hair, <coughs> hair makeup, but kind of the studio, but top two or three tiers. If I could take that group of people, pick them up, and send them to another planet, sex trafficking, sex predation would drop 35%. That is the engine room of trafficking, depravity, and the like, okay? Some people would argue that sexual abuse would naturally come anyway. It would, it, it would occur because it's a form of violence, okay? Robbery naturally comes in the course of human development, the same way that theft does. Theft does. <clears throat> That's somebody's food. I'm taking it. Theft is natural. Robbery is that, hey, give me that. Give me that or I'll hit you. Give me that or I'll club you with this thing. That's robbery. It's natural, right? Theft. Then there's, you know, this idea of forcible theft, which is robbery. Burglary, sort of, I'm going to go into your cave and I'm going to take your stuff, which is really an offshoot of theft. Nobody really got it. I'm going to go into your, your cave and hurt you. Murder, obviously, Cain and Abel. And, of course, sexual abuse, sexual battery, sexual predation. Naturally, naturally a part of that's natural, forced. I want that, especially as the cerebral cortex begins to okay are you listening are you listening when sexual abuse and victimization becomes ceremonial when it becomes a rite of passage when it becomes a part of induction ceremonies when it becomes um, when it becomes a part of a religion, a rite of passage, induction, ceremony, 
symbolism, symbology, a tradition. Thank you, Uncle Sham. When it becomes something, what we do to captive warriors, you know, rape, pillage, rob, and that that notion of this, the notion of when it was, and it was, you have no idea what German women went through at the end of World War II by American and French soldiers. Nobody will talk about this. Nobody. When that happens, now we're onto a different realm. Let me say this again. When sexual abuse becomes traditional, ceremonial, uh, um, when it becomes an, part of an invocation, when you have induction ceremonies, when you have, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Now, when you have a group of people where the people at the very top themselves, and you can go, you can go way back before Weinstein, you can go way back to the days of Pickfair and Clara Bow, and before, from the days of Chaplin to I, I, I don't know. You take these people, and what happens? What happens? First, you put them together, and they tend to be a little creative. Okay, a little creative. That's fine. They tend to see things a little bit differently than most people do. That's fine. Maybe they're a little, dare I say, maybe they're a little uh, creative and different and wacky and weird. I don't know. Could very well be. Listen to what I'm saying, my friends. Listen to what I'm saying. And please, I ask you yet again, and I want I want our, our den mother, Lizzie Solak, I need... 9,000 likes, okay? I don't want to be a pain in the ass. I hate when they do that to me, but I got to tell you something. It's it's all, It puts us into this new realm, this new world when they see this. And if you like this, algorithmic tendencies, okay, good, let's put this into the stream. And all of a sudden, I'm now in traffic. And people will see us and they'll say, hey, wait a minute. I like this dude and I like his friends. And you're my friends. You're my family. So please, we need your likes. I know it sounds like a... Okay. But let's go through this and let's spend some time. This is important. Okay? When you take people who are very creative, Charlie Chaplin, very, very visionary, especially when, to a certain degree... And I'm not saying we're into the days of the Medici's and Da Vinci, but but societies have always paid great homage to these people. All of a sudden, they get into this position. And the first thing is the heads of this set the standard. The casting couch. The, how do I say this? The... Um, sharing of ideas. And when the moguls get together, from Max Sennett to uh, uh, Hal Roach and, you know, everybody from that initial nascent, they're like the Wright brothers of this. You find out that, oh, you think you're a perv? I'm a perv. And then it's set. Do you hear what I'm saying? Major Michael, ladies and gentlemen, has a very interesting question. Major Michael says, who installed a sock puppet as Baltimore mayor? My friends, Mr. Michael, that are the Baltimore uh, folks, the Marylanders. Let them. I know when you look at this, you're going to say, what? This is not a racial thing. They're going to do that. I told you, number one, Tiffany Henyard. Tiffany Henyard is my favorite. You haven't. No. You have no earthly idea what we are talking about here, okay? Brandon Scott is John Kenneth Galbraith compared to Tiffany Henyard. Now, let's go through this again. And thank you very much, Michael, for this. We're talking about a series of predation that builds up. Now we also take, let's let's take these people. 
And in now, I'm going to use your word, okay? Okay. Uh, this this is important for me to say this to you, and this is this is critical. And I'm I'm sorry to say this. This is not necessarily the Illuminati, but this is something else that's a little different. Yes, there are people who listen. They're still doing this skull and bones thing. I don't know how, but they're still doing it now. Sean Martin, by the way, has something important. He says, I live in Maryland. Most Pauls are corrupt Dems. Would not surprise me, sir. Would not surprise me. This place needs a... Listen, we've had... Let me stop one second. New York, we had Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall was a, a boss tweed. Tammany Hall was one of the most effective things available. In New York, we had Democratic clubs. We had um, the uh, the McManus Club. The, we had different uh, people that you need a job, you need help, somebody dies, you need money for a... Graft and corruption sometimes actually work. There was a time, believe it or not, when there was a great, great piece in The Godfather about how uh, giving corrupt police officers, giving them some extra money on the side, actually improved law enforcement. I know that sounds terrible, but it's true. Remember, we are realists. We work. Okay? We work. Tell you a true story quickly. We had a woman we knew. She owned a beauty salon third on the uh, uh oh six picks six pixie sticks new member thank you thank you for this we had a friend of ours on the on the uh east side midtown east sort of owned a um a uh beauty salon and they told her she was new to new york now when make sure you you spiff your your Mail guy, do you have to give a mail guy that comes every day? Post office, postman, or yeah, make sure you spiff them. Christmas time. I'm not going to do that. Okay, is that graft? No. Is that corruption? No. But if you don't do it, guess what? Anytime she had a problem, couldn't find the guy. Everybody else, no problem. So sometimes reality works. So we are realists when it comes to. The idea of you helping people. I always thought if I moved into a town, a little town, little town, let's say I just move in and we decide to move someplace that's doable. First thing I do is I walk in and I say, may I meet the mayor? Yes. My name is so-and-so. It's a pleasure to be here. If I could ever do anything to help you in this great city, you let me know. No money. Where's the chief of police? Chief, my name is so-and-so. If there's anything I can do for you and your great men and women, you let me know. Uh, name it. But then, you know, oh. Let me tell you a quick story. Quick, quick, quick story before we forget this. When I was a kid, my father was in the liquor business. He had wholesale liquor, whole family. And I remember in, uh, he took care of all the nuns, all the priests. And one year, I walked up, I think it was seventh grade, I walked up to my world history teacher, this guy, Mr. I'm not going to mention his name. I say, excuse me, what do you drink? He said, what? <laughs> What's a seven-year-old kid? My father, it's Christmas time. My father wanted me to, and the, and the, oh, and they kind of heard me. Oh, he said, well, I'm like, uh, Cuddy Sark. Cuddy Sark? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. But got, got father, father him, got him. Well, anyway, I forget how we did it, but Christmas time, we got him a, not not just the regular, you know, but, but you mean like one of these things. Merry Christmas. Oh, he was a seven-year-old kid giving you a a, 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 a a suitcase full of, you know, uh, scotch. Works like a charm. I'm spreading good cheer. I learned that long ago. I learned that a long time ago. Absolutely. Last story. I one time there was a McDonald's on 56 and 8th. This place to this day at night, <laughs> I used to do stand up, come back, come back late. I was eating meat then. And it was late. And it's the only place that was open. I mean, it, it looked like something from uh, some gang movie or it was really rough. One time there was a young lady behind there. And I don't know what, what, 
what came over me. But she was always so nice. So I gave her a 20. I said, here, stick that in your sock. You know. One time I came in, place was packed. She sees me over here. I walk to the end. What'll it be? And they're looking at me like, who's this? I'll tell you who I am. I'm the one who gave her twenty dollars because you people treat her like like she's an animal. So I just, I just, I just gotta tell you that I be nice to people. Be nice to people. Okay. Last story I'm gonna tell you, and then we'll go back to this. Seventh grade, I changed schools in midstream. Walked in the first day, they had a spelling bee. The true story. I'm not exaggerating. I was always a good speller, but th th this was. So they said there was a spelling bee. I literally, as I say, literally, literally walked in after they sat down in the back of my friends, who I'm still friends with. This was 1970, I guess. I sat down. There was a spelling bee, spelling test. They said, "Well, you, you know, you, you don't have to take it." I said, "Why not?" Well, you didn't study for it. I said, "I'll take it." Seventh grade. Even as a seventh grader, I said these words. This is easy. I got it. Aced it. I don't mean 99. I got 100. Hey, what? 10 words. No big deal. They said, whoa. I also found out that every day people were doing this thing. We had, we had this workbook. And on Friday, uh, oh no, you came back Monday and, and you worked this little chapter on the weekend. So one day I had this thing on the weekend. I said, why don't we just finish the book? This is stupid. What am I waiting for? Why am I doing this incrementally? They're like, this is nothing. I walked in. I said, here, I'm finished. You have another book? I'll tell you one day how I learned the Greek alphabet when I was in third grade. Learned how to type. Wrote J. Edgar Hoover. It's a long story. What I'm telling you is that get along with people. Figure out what they like. Figure out what gets their attention. And get along with them. Be nice. Be nice. All right. Let's get back to this. And remember, always be suspicious. But suspicious doesn't mean proof. Now let's get to the good stuff here. Where is this really good stuff? Oh, look at this one. Let's go. You know I love the daily. The, uh, I love, love. <clears throat> By the way, look at this. This is an active search. There's somebody uh, who's running the show. Oh, Governor Westmore. He took over. Declared a state of emergency. Let's go to Diddy. I know I'm jumping all over the place, but please, please bear with me. Prince Harry is named in bombshell $30 million lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs. Watch him. Watch Russell Simmons in Bali, who was served. Oh. Listen also to the words of Cat Williams. Listen also what Chris Brown says. Just you will not believe what people have been saying about this guy. Untouchable. Untouch seemingly untouchable. Well, you know what? It hit the fan. <laughs> Prince Harry named in a bombshell $30 million lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs. By the way, how do you know this this is this is not this is not a I'm, this is not my joke. Somebody says, you know, how, how do you know she, uh, Diddy's a groomer? How? Combs. Get it? Okay. The producer suing the rapper in U.S. over sex trafficked parties says stars access to the Duke of Sussex and other celebrities boosted his legitimacy. Prince Harry's name appears in court documents related to a 30 million lawsuit. Record producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones. Lil Rod. Not little. It says L-I-L. Lil. Lil. You want to watch the Lil Rascals? Lil Women? Lil. Now, if your name is Lillian, maybe it's Lillian. I have no idea. Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed a bombshell lawsuit against Diddy and claims that his affiliation to Harry and other stars gave him and his associates legitimacy. The court documents filed in the U.S. last month do not suggest any wrongdoing on Harry's part. 
He is a defendant, and he is not a defendant, and is named only once in a 73-page document. doesn't matter. Lou Rod's lawyers claim guests were drawn to Diddy's alleged sex trafficking parties because of his access to uh, celebrities, such as famous athletes, political figures, and the like. Prince William and Prince Harry met Diddy and Kanye West at a post-concert party. Now, we're going to find out about this. Now, listen to me and listen good. I'm telling you this. I want you to understand this. If you get to the bottom of this, if you get to who's corrupt, I want to know there are people within, and it's not the black community, but this is a billion plus dollar industry. Where did Diddy get all this money? This is conspicuous wealth. Elon Musk doesn't live like this. Somebody is promoting not just the money, but the image of the money. Who is it? How did Fannie Willis get $8 million? How does a woman who has been in public service the whole time get $8 million? Remember, you're my detectives. Go out and work on this. This is what we are figuring. We got to get to the bottom of this. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Okay? And remember also, where there's smoke, there was fire. Because sometimes the smoke is smoldering. Look at these people. Cat Williams, Cat Williams, Cat Williams. I told you this. Every now and then, I know exactly what happens. I see exactly. I know what I'm talking about. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. There is a level of corruption. And I want to know about the, t here's what I, this would be my thing. If I had all the money, if I investigated, I would have a Tyler Perry division and an Oprah division. And I would do, I was a Tyler Perry, Oprah. Tell me about them. My agents. Do you know what's going on? <laughs> Tyler Perry, Sean Penn. I want to go anywhere where there's children, anywhere where there's girls, any 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 um any uh, NGOs, anybody else. What happened in Haiti? Check that out. Check this out. I want you to understand something, and I want you to listen to me. There are two two uh guiding um two guiding principles that infuriate me that if i had to explain this to you if i had to tell you what they were if i had to tell you what is it that motivates me more than anything else two concomitant theories i would say actually number 2 is when people are treated differently, unfairly, not treated differently by virtue of, of, uh, of, of a talent, but when they're treated differently by virtue of something else, where you're from, your skin color. I hate the fact that there was a time in this country when Jackie Robinson couldn't play baseball. That I don't understand that. I don't understand how somebody can say, we're going to take you because of your faith, you because of your sexuality, you, or we're going to put you into a concentration camp or we're going to arrest. It drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. One of the tenets, one of the things that makes us who we are, one of our things, where is it, my friends? Where is my, it's somewhere. Anyway, our, I, I always have my uh, constitution. Equal protection, equal protection under the law, equal protection. That's why DEI drives me crazy. Equity is bullshit. That's not equality. I want you. The reason why I am not in the NBA is because I'm not seven feet tall. I'm 65 years old and I can't play basketball. It has nothing to do with my race. Nothing. 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 
Don't tell me anything. LeBron James is not in LeBron James, but maybe our names are similar. Hey, because of his talent. You want to argue race? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's why this business with Leah Thomas, it's unfair. You're a man. She's a woman. You're not just a man. You're a, Okay, so that's number one. Number two, but number one, number one, listen to what I'm telling you. When you bully somebody and you take somebody and you lure them in by virtue of their dreams, you take them and you say, this is why I hate predators. You have no idea. See what a predator does is he finds out, I've told you this before, a predator finds out what your weaknesses are. And a predator finds out where, oh, I see. And they, they, they use it against you. And they pull you in. They pull you in. Oh, you want to be a star. Oh, you want to be, oh, you're some black kid from the hood. Just like in the movie. Just, just like in the documentary, Quiet on Set. This one kid in Nickelodeon wanted to do this for his family. And they knew that. Oh, this means a lot to you, does it? Well, then you wouldn't mind doing something special for me, would you, kid? I mean, after all, how much do you love your mom or dad? How bad can this be if it helps mom and dad? It's, 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 it's beyond, it's, it's disgusting to the point where I can't even see straight. Stand by for one second. I'm going to have to calm down here. I get very upset. This when I see these Diddy, this Diddy. Listen to what Chris Brown is saying. Listen to what Cat Williams said. Look at and how they they promote this guy and they let him do this. Why? That's the real question. But in the meantime, on a lighter, better, more beautiful note, who doesn't love a great pillow? Well, if you love a great pillow, then you will really love. My pillow. Well, it's time yet again to hail and salute our great friends at mypillow.com. And if you use promo code Lionel, you get a free gift. No purchase necessary. I know, I know, a free gift. Gifts are free. Okay, it's a tautology. So sue me. But listen to me and listen carefully. What are we talking about here? Down comforters, flannel sheets, Giza Dream bed sheets, my pillow 2.0 body pillows, waffle blankets, couch and recliner pillows, sheets, slippers, percales, I'm not even done yet, towels, quilts, bedspreads, mattresses, mattress covers, mattress toppers, linens, kitchen towels, bathrobes, pet blankets, pet blankets, bolster pillows, name it, items to help you luxuriate and relax. And they're monster sellers, slippers, my slippers, slip-ons, moccasins, think about it. What do they do at my pillow? What's their main goal? To make things real soft, plush, real comfy, comfy, or comfy as I say it. How perfect. So here's the link right now. Go to mypillow.com slash Lionel. Mypillow.com, promo code Lionel or slash Lionel, or call 800 645 4965. 800 645 4965. And watch how fast our good friend Mike Lindell answers the phone. MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel, simply and absolutely the best. In January, I believe, I think it was January, out of, a, out of the blue came this fellow, Cat Williams. Nobody knew what was going on. I kind of knew who he was, but I, okay, fine. Cat Williams, big deal, right? Big deal. So I listened to him and I thought, I like this guy. Why do I like this guy? And then I found out why I like this guy because of his message. And the message that he was giving repeatedly, the message, which was so critical, and he was using the words which you love, this thing called the Illuminati. And they asked him about Diddy. And all of a sudden, now, now, what, what's so beautiful about this is most of us, and, and I'm going to tell you something, and I mean this, most people have no, and, and, and I know this, because 
you have, maybe you do, maybe you don't, because you don't have any natural affinity for little Jones or little Rod or old smelly dirty bastard or no tor I don't even know. I always liked uh, this KRS one who is is so out there during the course of uh, when in the I want to say around two thousand before before nine eleven, but when the when the internet I mean the internet really was ninety six, but when it was really picking up speed, all of a sudden there were the you know the Alex Joneses and these other these kind of People who, who were, it was exciting. Today, I don't want to get into, um, um, I don't want to, how do I say this? I don't want to be discourteous. But there are people who are there just enjoying the ride. Reminds me of the 80s when everybody wanted to go into comedy. Everybody was, it was a comedy. There was Bud Freakins. It was Evening of the Empire. There was, remember, remember in your town, Yuck Yucks, Ha Ha's, comedy clubs. It was, oh my God. But, but in New York, there was really, it was danger fields and catch a rising. No, no, no. Anyway, well, everybody thought, oh, we can do it. And then it was on TV. Everybody had them. And then there was this oversaturation, this oversaturation of comedy. Then came 1985, maybe, Rush Limbaugh. Everybody wanted to be the next Rush Limbaugh. So what did they do? They came out of nowhere. And they kept replicating themselves over and over and over and over and over. It was a rush wannabe. And then that kind of, you know, sort of. Then, luckily, da -da, came the internet. And now we have these folks. <clears throat> and we're having a lot of people who are enjoying some incredible, incredible uh, talent. But I want you to notice something. And I don't know if you've noticed this. A lot of people who are famous guests and who get a lot of um, uh, play are not interesting in the least. And I think there's sometimes there's the illusion that, hey, I've got somebody in my studio. They're not interesting. I could name you 10 people who are not interesting. But they have a big name. Okay. There's another world that's kind of happening that has picked up, and you may not know this, and we'll call it either black entertainment, we'll call it uh, hip hop, we'll call it urban, we'll call it whatever it is. And there is this. So all you do is you take one second, put in um, Diddy allegations, and wow. And it started with Cat Williams. I never knew, never. Never knew. It's like, do you ever, have you ever noticed something where all of a sudden you find out, I never knew how terrible these child uh, beauty pageants are. I don't know what kids got, right? I don't know what these poor, I didn't know these poor kids that are being parallel, uh, paralyzed in cheerleader camps. I didn't know that. All of a sudden you just are aware of something. Well, that's what's happening right now. And Diddy, look at his home. Look at his homes. Gulf Street, where is this coming from? Listen to me. Then there's the charter school. Did you see that one? He ripped off in East Harlem. There's this, this one, this charter school, which he supposedly is involved with. That's just a disaster. Taking people just, there's some, there's some internet folks too, who when you go into realize these are con artists. These are con artists, but you don't know that yet. And you ask yourself, how long does this take before people realize it? Little little background, my friends. If it wasn't for Joe Valachi, if it wasn't for Vinny Teresa, if it wasn't for the Kefauver Commission and the McClellan Commission, nobody knew anything about the mob, the mafia, nobody. Raul Rodriguez says, well, did he be found guilty? Hasn't been charged with anything yet. Has him in charge. He has civil cases going on. He has civil. And thank you. But there's no criminal. But before the mafia happened, nobody knew. No, but, but before this happened, they didn't know. They thought they thought Frank Costello was Irish. Frank Costello was in New York. He would, he would put the Salvation Army. This guy was the smartest. He was the inspiration for the Godfather. I pay my tax. His voice. Remember that? 
He was the original ones. They didn't know who he was because J. Edgar Hoover was paid off. Because J. Edgar Hoover and his girlfriend, Clyde Tolson, you understand this? This is this is a very serious thing. He was a degenerate gambler, and Frank Costello used to take care of them all the time. J. Edgar Hoover said, I can't admit that there's an organized crime syndicate in my country when I'm the chief law enforcement officer. I can't admit to that, so I'm going to go after communism. Nobody knew they were there. And then once you realize, he goes, holy shit, what you think, what you know as the mob, the Irish mob, it was going on since the Lupo, since... Uh, um, Oh, what's his name? The artichoke. Ciro Terranova. Says the artichoke king. The artichoke, this, this, is, this has been going on forever. The five points gang. There were nobody knew who they were. Same thing with this. There were these sexual predators who like to go in and get young men and turn quote turn them gay. Well, you don't turn somebody gay, but you may involve them in a kind of uh how do I say this? I think uh, they're they're they're. How do I say this? They they are put into position where they're able to do things that are either considered gay sex or man on man. Now let me ask you something. Why is that important in the structure of things? And please let me explain something. This is not an anti-gay or anti-homosexual statement. Okay. I'm going to say this again. They do this to women. They do this to children. They do this to everybody. But there is something that is very special. Why do you think that is? Since the beginning of time, I don't know what happens, but there are, there's this thing about domination. And it starts from a little puppy that's humping your leg all the way to prison. Do you think people who go into prison were all gay men? No. It's domination. It's violence. And it's also embarrassment, extortion, and owning you. Rafael Legonde says, F. Scott Fitzgerald, American novelist and essayist, went to the same thing too. Superstars like P. Diddy are different from us. We participated too. Well, you know what? I thank you for that. It, 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 it's, the, it's the end of time. I heard stuff. You wouldn't believe. Put it this way. You wouldn't believe the stories that have been going around. I'm going to give you one name. I'm not going to go into detail. But it's what people have been saying. If I told you this, you would think, well, somebody has got to be uh, and I'm not talking. I'm not talking bad, bad criminal. But I mean, pretty uh, shitty. Andy Griffith. What? Walter Brennan. Uh, Clark Gable. Uh, Lombard. Uh, uh, oh God. Uh, Clara Bow. Um, what? Bob Hope. Now remember, I'm not saying you know, Satanism or anything. What I'm telling you is that the better, the cleaner the act, the more suspect. Then came something even more interesting. Then came something even more interesting. Right around, remember this, during the 50s, it got real nasty. Elvis with kid, with the, with the, Elvis was a per. The stuff about Elvis, Priscilla Presley, what was she, 14, 12? Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, think about this, Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, um, Chuck Berry, and it was somebody else. Chuck Berry was running for the Elvis. Uh, they, they, it, it was just like a dearth. It was like, oh, my God. It was Perv City. Remember during the 50s, remember this name, and they still haven't done a good job on it, Charlie Starkweather. You talk about a serial killer and Carol was a fugate. Remember that story? Oh, I remember Charlie Starkweather years ago. The original James Dean. What a, oh my God. 
in cold blood. So what came along? What resurrected that? What was it? The Beatles. Clean cut. Stones scared people. But the Beatles. The Beatles came along and saved the show. Changed everything. Big time. Think about that one. Babe Ruth. What? Oh, Babe Ruth. If Babe Ruth... Remember in the old days, what used to get men, a lot of them, was syphilis. I'm not saying Babe Ruth is syphilis. It could have, but but um, Al Capone, tertiary syphilis just made people crazy. Babe Ruth saved professional baseball after the Black Sox scandal. Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth put it on the map. So who came along? Who changed it? The Beatles. Remember, the Beatles were kind of... Um, it's it's not really what you think. It's not the 60s. It's really the 70s and the 60s. And you've always heard about people like Tavistock. And that, by the way, Tavistock is used, the, the, the term is used too loosely. But there's a very interesting thing about CIA. You will never understand. Read um, Annie Jacobson's on, book on nuclear war now. The CIA, I don't know if it, if it's if it's as good as it used to be, but during its prime, it was. Days of Angleton, oh my God. They were so, and they permeated everything. You think Mockingbird was good? What did they have during the 60s? Rock music. The long hairs. What put an end, what was it that put an end to the, please, I hope you see how things are kind of, how entertainment and Society are kind of interwoven. What changed everything? Manson. 1969 ended everything. Woodstock. Hey, Summer of Love was 67. Hey, everything's groovy. Manson changed everything. Then they became dirty looking and scary. Jim Morrison, druggies, debauched, right? Who was Jim Morrison's old man? Who was Zappa's old man? Look at the connection of where these people, how it's interesting. These, these, uh, these military industrial folks have these very talented, weird guys. Interesting. And then all of a sudden, and listen to me carefully. There always was the idea. Fatty Arbuckle, Fatty Arbuckle's case was blown out of proportion. This woman who, nothing that you can imagine ever happening now compares to the 20s. Nothing. If you think we live in a world of sexual profligacy today, nothing compares to the 20s. Nothing. Nothing. And then after that, if you, you, there was a, I forget what it was, but there was a cattle call in I don't know what, what 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 studio it was, but every you know the Lana Turner story at Schwab's were discovered. Every everybody from every town, every cheerleader, every homecoming queen, every actress, every starlet, every pretty girl, every every Miss uh, Dubuque, every Miss uh, Apple Pie from you know you know Dothan, Alabama. All these people they converged on Hollywood. And the studio heads sat there licking their chops. They couldn't believe when the buses showed up every day. It was, it was the end. It, it was, it was debauchery. It set everything in motion. They owned the newspapers. They owned the police. There was no rape charge. Nobody got nobody got charged with rape. Never, never. Uh, uh. No. They owned everything. When the confidential came along and threatened to expose Rock Hudson, they get man. He married this secretary or somebody. They owned everything. When you read the book, what was his name? Scotty. Uh, Scotty Ballard. Yeah. Read about Scotty Ballard or read about how he came out of the war. He was a Marine and he worked at a, at a gas station. And all of a sudden, all of these uh, people, I think Walter Pigeon and all these 
actors famous showed up and they loved them. Remember the, the Spencer Tracy story? It was nuts, but kept out. America couldn't handle it. And gay, it was still against the law. It was still that. By the way, I just looked up the number 666. Wow. What does that mean? Nothing. But it looks good. This was never broken. They never broke this down. Never. They never stopped it. Here's a story that I would love for somebody to go into. And it's too old, Ryan. It's too done. Natalie Wood's story. You think Natalie Wood died? You think she just, oh, she went swimming? You believe this story? It's the most ridiculous story in the world. Princess died. Nobody. You don't understand something. Americans and people don't want to get near stuff. They don't want to know the answer to. Most people still cannot imagine their parents having sex. They can't imagine their own conception. It's disgusting to them. Scotty Bauer. That's the story. Remember uh, Hollywood Babylon? Remember all these? Oh, my God. So this is the chance. So what you're seeing right now, this isn't new. Uh, rap and, and uh, uh, death row and this, they didn't create this. But where's this money from? But see, now, now we're into, if you look deep enough, and I'm not saying it's our friend, Mr. Uh, Diddy, because he hasn't been charged criminally with anything. Why do you think that is? Why go through all this, but not charge him? Tells everybody else. He owns us. We own him. He's talking. That's why he's not arrested. He's cooperating. Full service. I think that was it. Thank you, R.D. This is so interesting. And it takes time. And you have to know what, when to react, when not to react. We're going to be talking more about this. We haven't even gotten yet to the more point. But remember, just, did he stop in charge of anything? But Cat Williams, now watch. Where's Cat? He... You think you think you think Club Shay Shay? You think Club Shay? You think um, Shannon Sharp is going to have him back on? No, they're telling him I don't even want you to know him. I don't want you to even know him because they're now going back. Listen to what he said. Listen to what Cat uh, Williams said about Diddy. How Diddy wants to lure you into Frosted Flake stories and oh my God, you can't believe this! And they allowed this guy, and everybody knew it wasn't necessarily against the law. But what I was saying before, and I'm going to leave you with this. What do they have with you? Blackmail. They own you. In the black community, in the black community, you may not understand this. But in some pockets, maybe not all, but the idea of somebody being gay is not exactly something that is, a, that is aspirational in a lot of folks. That's why Prop 8 failed. Everybody thought, well, gay, black folks are real liberal. And no, no. You hear that, Trump? Trump is ignoring them. He just, Trump just assumes that black voters are going to stick with they just He just assumes. Oh, I'm gonna. I've just thrown at you a million things. They're all intertwined. They're all connected. They're all, it's like a, it's like a big Gordian knot. And they're fascinating. Okay? And by the way, what I know is 10% of what Mrs. L knows. And by the way, one more time. Let me say this to you one more time. One more time. I want you to follow her at Lynn's Warriors. Right here. Lynn's Warriors. There we go. Right here. Lynn's Warriors on YouTube. And Lynn's Warriors, L-Y-N-N-S underscore Warriors on X or I can't call it X. It's Twitter. We'll call later. Make sure you follow me. Raphael, thank you. Raul, Six Pixie Sticks, Sean Martin, Major Michael. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've got more stuff coming. And I just have this list of mention this, mention this, mention this. And wait until you see how this story is going to go away so fast. Because they're going to say, we don't want you doing this anymore. We don't want you bringing this up. All right, dear friends, have a great and glorious day. Thank you. Don't ever change. I mean that sincerely. See you tonight at 7.
Don't forget, subscribe. And the monkey's dead. The show's over. Sue you. Dead, dead.